Ladies and gentlemen, the meat shortages have hit home and they have hit hard with Wendy's literally removing burgers from the menu of their burger place. They're not the only ones affected. McDonald's is actively retooling their internal distribution networks to try and keep serving meat on their menus. And major grocery retailers, as we've been warning about for weeks, have now implemented the limits on meat purchases if they have meats on the shelves at all. Kroger, HEB, Hy-Vee, and Costco all implementing some form of rationing on how much you can take home whether it looks like two pounds of ground beef and then two pounds of any other protein be it chicken pork or beef um, sometimes limits on and on eggs now, this is prompting especially large families to say look i got eight kids how am i supposed to feed my family of 10 if i only get two pounds of ground beef in a dozen eggs a week that doesn't work but it's not just the large families that need to be worried because while Wendy's is saying this is just a temporary thing, don't worry, everything's going to be fine eventually, what I intend to demonstrate for you today is two things. One, that it's not, that there are forces at work to permanently codify restrictions that will act as shackles on the food production of this country and of, of the world, that global food production is being throttled back by design and forever. That's, this is not a temporary supply interruption as we're being led to believe by the media here. And secondly, and more concerningly, that it's not just meat production that is affected, that these um, restrictions and this throttling back is also applying to all agricultural labor and harvesting and maintaining everything and so this is going to affect all crops and this if we aren't able to stop it will cause food shortages which is exactly what they want because people aren't afraid about the virus anymore they're getting kind of tired of the quarantine they're irritated they're ready to get back to work and so they need to give new sharper more of more scary teeth to their totalitarian agenda and that is what the food shortages are supposed to be. I want to make it clear that even though you can't take home meat, if you can find it, uh, China is actively taking it home right now. In fact, they are extracting the protein from this nation at a record speed from Reuters. As the U.S. is on the brink of its own meat crisis due to the coronavirus pandemic, American pork supplies are being shipped off to China at a breakneck speed creating the perfect recipe for additional tensions. For some American consumers, the optics of this situation might be poor. Karen, it's not the optics. It's the reality of the fact that we're having food shortages, even as China is tripling 300% year over year what they took out of this country last year. And so if we're not able to feed our own people, then we need to change the way we're doing business here. We need That's the point of having a nation, is to protect our people and feed our people not to, to kill off our food supply even as we send off last year's pork to China. But that's exactly what's happening because indeed with the meat sh plants shut down, farmers are now having to make that decision to euthanize their own animals. Healthy pigs are being killed off as the meat packing backlog hits the farmers. Obviously this causes lasting financial damage to the ranchers and the farmers themselves as well. And the pictures, I'm only going to share a couple because there is such a thing as vicarious trauma, and I don't want to just display these horrific images, but I do think it's important to draw visual attention to what's going on right now, and that is that our food supply is literally being killed and hauled to the dump. Here are a truckload of pigs that's already been euthanized, being hauled off to the dump. You can see massive piles of pigs being reported on Twitter and dairy cows as well being taken to the landfill by the truckload. This was sent to me by a guy who works there at the landfill and said, this is the third truck today. This is not the first day this week, and I don't know what to do about it. So I appreciate him sending me this image. Farmers are warning this is not just a problem for us financially, but we have to get this animal harvest going or people are going to starve to death. This is the most calorie dense food production we have is meat. Uh, animal production needs to reopen or people will starve. This is a matter of national defense and national security. Yes, it is. And that's why when you see all of that meat being hauled off to China, you know there are bigger agendas at work here. There are forces at play. 
It's not just the U.S. also. I think it's actually quite telling that Australia meatpacking plants are also having problems with these coronavirus up, uh, outbreaks and that they're considering shutting down or throttling back production as well. And like I said, it's these union workers, these activists who are getting involved and trying to make sure that food production suffers. For instance, here, you know, how, lo- how long will these meat shortages last? Is Wendy's right? Is this a temporary situation? Well, we see here that even though Trump is using the Defense Production Act to try and get the meat plants to open, they will only do so subject to the CDC's and the OSHA guidelines. And that means that they'll be forced to implement social distancing within their meat factories, which means cutting down on the production. In fact, let me use Brad Frecking, who is a hog uh, packing plant supervisor to explain that to you. Here you go. If I got to spread people out on those lines, which are within a brick and mortar building, so I have no more room. So that means I got to remove half my workforce. So instead of running at 1400 carcasses per hour, I'm down to 700. I'm at 50% capacity. And that's why you're going to tell me that this country is going to produce food, meat at 50% the historical capacity. Well, and that's and, problem, Vance. So you've just heard directly from someone who runs a meatpacking plant in a great interview with Vance Crow. I've left a link to this interview and this channel below. He's doing a great interview, a bunch of great interviews, and I recommend you subscribe to him. Thanks for your work, Vance. But the key here is that it's not just the meatpacking plants. Like I said, here are Democrat leaders within California saying we need to implement protections for our farm workers. Domestic farm workers, many of whom are undocumented immigrants, are going to be covered by a bill of rights for essential workers. Ah, a bill of rights. Protections. It sounds so good. It's it's for the public safety, after all, right? But what we just heard is that, no, this is a permanent throttling back of food production. This is an attempt to, uh, let's see, well, I think the issue of basic worker safety is so pressing that we can overcome partisan concerns and objections. Workers' rights should be an easy lift. It's in every American's self-interest. Do you see how they've dressed up the permanent handicapping of our food production as a human rights issue? This is stunning. This 10-point framework calls for hazard pay, child care, PPE, health care, and prohibitions on employers changing collective bargaining agreements. So it makes the union stronger. It establishes hazard pay, child care, and health care for undocumented immigrants. Dude, they're getting a better package than anybody else I know right now. And they are trying to roll all of this into the next stimulus response. In other words, while you think that they're uh, passing something that's going to help the economy, what they're doing is actually permanently destroying food production in the United States. This is not just happening in California. Here is an article out of Washington, and it's not just the meat processing. Like I said, here's an article, Apples versus Inslee, a union-led shutdown in Washington state. The state's fruit harvest will be left to rot under politically motivated new state rules. Washington state leaders are about to send half of the state's essential seasonal farm workers home. The result would destroy over half of the state's 3 million ton apple harvest. That's 6 billion pounds of apples. That's half of the U.S. production of frozen processed strawberry, uh, raspberries and also millions of pounds of other fruits and vegetables. This is our food supply, ladies and gentlemen. 15,000 plus members of the seasonal workforce would be sent home. According to experts, it's unlikely that berry farmers would even be able to survive under these guidelines. Is that clear? These farmers provide 75% of our frozen and processed raspberries and many of our fresh and frozen blueberries. If we reduce the seasonal workforce by half, not only would we lose at least half of the crop, but we probably wouldn't even be able to, to open these farms back up next year because it takes labor just to tend to these orchards, just to care for these fields and keep those plants alive. So never mind actually harvesting the crops. We might not even be able to keep the farms open. 
they may not survive. 75, I'm sorry, 70% of these guest workers would have been employed on the apples, which is the number one food commodity in the state. So this is affecting the economy as well. But uh, it's it's just, it's stunning. It's staggering, ladies and gentlemen. The federal government eased restrictions on guest workers during the pandemic because the Trump administration figured it out. They figured out that workers are a critical part of our nation's food supply. And that's why these unions and these activists have gone, and the media have gone now to the governors, of, especially of blue states, to try and use uh, to get in at that level to make sure that this agenda gets pushed forward. If they had the president under control, they probably would, this would all be shut down already. You know, I'm not saying that I am all in for Trump, but I am thanking my stars that he's there right now to at least slow this down. Activists are using legal action, lobbying, and media to pressure Governor Jay Inslee and other state Democratic leaders to pursue the agenda against this guest worker program. It's not just in Washington. This is why the the ag experts are saying everybody needs to be putting in a plan B, if not a plan C, just to make sure that they'll be able to get their harvest done this year. Because if there's a wave two of the virus and another round of this whole nonsense, then um, the inability to harvest our crops in the fall is going to be a complete catastrophe. And that's what we're looking ahead to right now. How the COVID pandemic is sending American agriculture into chaos. But let's be really clear here, because this is PBS, this is the you know the media's hype here, but it's not the pandemic, is it? It's these unions and these governors that are caving into them and the media frenzy that's created the fear that's being used to perpetrate this entire agenda. And as I said, it's not just... California. It's not just Inslee in Washington where they've sued for more worker protections. But look at this. Uh, That's Washington. You can see the same thing happening in Oregon. Farm workers uh, lack a safety net. See the same thing happening in Colorado where unions and lawmakers are demanding more protections for their agriculture workers. Colorado food supply chain under threat. We see the same thing in California. We saw the other article about California. But it's even extending into the Midwest and states that you wouldn't think of as traditionally blue. Ohio, Idaho, and North Dakota needs to step up worker safety and food policies during the pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, they're targeting the states that produce the food for our country right now. And it's not just in the U.S. Again, we saw Australia having the same issues in their meatpacking plants. And we see also the EU talking about the same issues. We need better protections for our farm workers, which means more social distancing, which means less production. And this is it. This is the food war being carried out against all of us. The totalitarian agenda requires food scarcity in order to gain total control. But so Harry Kissinger, Henry Kissinger said, control food and you control the people. And to do that, they have to throttle everything back because there was too much food production before. And the whole climate change, global warming narrative just really lost its teeth. It wasn't working at all anymore. People just laughed at these you know, scientists who were saying, even as recently as a few months ago, 2020, February, top scientist in the UK says, we really should convert half of our farmland back into wildlands for the sake of the environment. Well, that just was prima facie ridiculous. Nobody even paid attention to that. And that's why they had to roll out this whole new approach, this whole new pandemic and social distancing, and now protections for the farm workers. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any doubt that they will implement and enforce these new protections, these new restrictions on food production, then look no further than the way that this reopening is already happening right now. In California, where I am, and in Texas, where they've had a few days head start on us, they've made significant progress at reopening things. But what that means is that people got pissed off, and so they started saying, fine, we can open up our restaurants, but you can only serve 25% capacity right now. It's impossible to be profitable when you've only got a quarter of your restaurant fed. It's the same sort of thing. This is a a shackle being placed around the economy and around small businesses and around food production. And they have teeth. So there was a salon owner in Dallas who said, I can't look, I got to feed my kids. I got to feed my kids. I'm reopening my salon. She has been arrested 
and sentenced to seven days in jail. Never mind the fact that we're letting out violent offenders from the prisons because of the pandemic. We're going to let those people out of jail. We're going to put in small business owners who don't listen to these restrictions. The new criminals are people who refuse to bow to the totalitarian agenda. So this is going to be, I expect to see this as well. I expect to see farmers jailed for trying to produce food because this is this is the teeth that are being given. I mean, there aren't enough people in Dallas, code enforcers, to walk around and enforce the fact that there should only be, you know, a quarter of the people eating at restaurants. There aren't enough police to enforce the fact that everyone is now required to wear a mask. This is the, the what's being called progress. Now we're we're gradually reopening. No, it's this is things getting tighter and tighter. The noose tightening around everyone's neck. And again most notably for the purposes of this video around food production. It's out of control. And all of this will be in place at least as long as it takes for us to just completely replace humans, to get them out of the equation. Now we're actually having the idea of slaughterhouse robots being floated because that way we can just get rid of meat packers completely. Well, if it was completely automated robot farms like the UN has been advocating now for years, then there would be no concerns here. So we're just going to have to completely throttle things down until we usher in the transhumanist food system that we've been talking about and wanting and coveting for hundreds of years now because it means we have total control over you. That's not the direction we need to move, ladies and gentlemen. And so when you hear sitting U.S. senators say, well, we really need to create an office of the supply chain, This is not a good idea. This is a further consolidation of control into a central authority. Let's move in the wrong direction. What we need to do is take our power back. Like this Pennsylvania dairy farmer who said, forget it. I'm not going to dump my milk. This is my livelihood. This is my life's work here. I'm just going to bottle up my own milk and I'm going to sell it direct to consumers. The American spirit lives on at a 300-year-old cream-lined dairy farm where a farmer worked around the clock to bottle his own milk after his milk processor on contract told him to dump it. Fortunately, locals came from miles around and lined up to come and uh, make sure that they bought his milk. He sold out within a few hours. This is a success story. This is the American spirit. This is how we all need to work together to support local farmers and ranchers who are feeling the effects of this and who need us to come support them and buy their milk and their meat directly from them. Wyoming as well took legislative action and said, look, forget it. Forget the USDA is trying to choke us. They're trying to starve us out. Literally, we're going to pass new laws in Wyoming that allow ranchers sell meat directly to consumers. So far, the USDA hasn't reacted to that. But this is what we all need to do. Act locally, get support um, from localities, from municipalities, or even at the state level, if you can manage it like Wyoming, to get out of this stranglehold that is being created by the media, the unions, and the federal government. I've also been hearing from people who have taken my advice to start tons and tons of seeds um, over the Victory Seed so that as your neighbors start to figure out that there are food shortages, you'll be able to give them some of these starts and they'll be able to start their, you know, bootstrap their garden using those starts. Um, here's someone who took that advice and actually made $300 last week by selling starts from their little vegetable starts from their driveway in their suburban location. So if you are out of work right now, here's a great way to make some supplemental income or replacement income is by growing food and then selling those starts to your neighbors. Not only does that help you get through immediately, but that helps them grow food, which means more and more people on team grow, helping us to all ensure our food security going forward. Resistance is fertile, ladies and gentlemen, and we really need to get the word out right now. And that's why I've created this site, thevictoryseed.org, which is a brochure, a web brochure that lets people know we're under unprecedented threats to our food security right now in 2020. It doesn't go into all the attacks because that's too much for people. Thanks for watching this video to actually get the details. But thevictoryseed.org is a very lightweight way for you to pass around knowledge about how to grow food. Please spread the word 
about this, about what's going on, and encourage people in your community to start growing food, because we're all in this together, and we need to get people aware of the fact that, that these unions and media and the democratic, that all of these forces are trying to permanently hobble food production and in turn take total control. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Please find my work on iceagefarmer.com directly and uh, subscribe on bitshoot.com slash iceagefarmer. There's been another wave of YouTube censorship and I just want to make sure that you are not depending on YouTube to get to Ice Age Farmer channel. In fact, I started posting some bitshoot exclusive content, stuff that's too hot for YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you're only getting part of the story now. Please go to icehfarmer.com for all of it. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Let's go build and grow food and make sure that we have food for this food security for our families and our communities going forward. Thanks for watching. Take care.